So as we're working in Access Module 3, we're going to start out working with um, creating a query. And the way we're going to do this is we're going to start out in Design View. And we all know that the automatic default is going to be in Data Sheet View. And so as we're starting out in here, um, the first thing I always want to remind you to do is always when you download these assignments, and um, from your Blackboard Online Classroom, I want to encourage you to go there to download the assignments. And that way you will make sure that you have this grading info table at the very top of your sheet. And if it does not have your first and last name up here, and if it does not say at the very top of the table, this grading info table, you need to go back, delete this file, go back and re-download it and make sure it has your first and last name up here. If it does not have that, please go back and re-download it and start again because you will not get the report at the end if it does not have that information. So you won't be able to see what it has wrong in it and um, it may not submit correctly. So please make sure it has this information um, before you submit the assignment. Um, okay, let's get started with this. And you know, I'm working through the project and Project A assignment as I'm going through the notes on this, just because it's kind of a recap of what's in the textbook project. project. So hopefully you have already gone through the textbook project and um, my notes kind of go along with project A and it's just a recap of what you learned in the textbook assignment. So we're starting out with the create tab up here at the top and we're creating a query and we're going to do this in design view. Okay, so we're going to go over here to the queries group. And so from here, you see a couple of different options in here. So you see a query wizard and you also see query design. So if it asks you to create a query in design view, you'll know that you need to to choose query design because it's automatically gonna open that up in the design view for you. Okay, so make sure you're reading the directions carefully and follow along with what it asks you to do. If it had asked me to open up a query in wizard view or use the query wizard to create a query, I would do that. But what I'm gonna do is create in design view. Now, what I'm gonna be doing next is be able to choose the tables that I want to um, create or select to show. It opens up the show table menu and I'm gonna be able to select the tables, the queries or both items that I want to be visible down here in my design view tab. As you can see, I'm in the design view so I can choose the options that I want visible as I'm working through this query. So in here, the items that it told me to select was the consultant table. So I'm just going to choose consultant, highlight it and click add. So my consultant table pops up over here. And that is the only one that I need to show up right now. So I'm going to close this out. And again, we notice that all of my field names are not visible because I have this little scroll bar over here on the right. We don't like that. Okay, so I just want to expand this out so that my scroll bar goes away and that way I can see all of my field names over here on the left hand side. So just make sure you expand that out so that you can see all of these names so that they're visible. So all we're going to do now is it tells us to add all of the field names to the design grid and we're going to be doing this in order. So it wants us to add consultant ID. It wants us to add last name. Um, let me make sure I'm doing this in order, hang on. Consultant ID, last name and first name in, in that order. So consultant ID, last name, double click that and then first name. So this is the order that it wants us to add them. So consultant ID, last name and first name field in that order. And then under the last name in the design grid, we're gonna go 
to the sort row. So down here, we're in our design view again, go under the sort row. And again, you see that little down arrow where you can choose what you're wanting to, to do. Um, it gives you the little, the little toggle key there. We're gonna sort this in ascending order, okay? And so once I have done that, I'm gonna click save up here, okay? When I click save, it gives me the option to save this and I get to choose my query name. So I'm gonna choose this. My query is last name sorted. Okay, make sure I got that correct, yeah. Okay, so again, we're using camel casing as we go. We don't wanna use any spaces. I'm capitalizing each word as I go through there with no spacing in it. And again, that's camel casing as we go down through there. So again, I have no spaces and I've capitalized each word. So I'm gonna click okay. So I have created a new query and it's called last name sorted. Right. Um, so when I click on, if I click on this over here, this last name sorted, it's automatically going to show me my last name sorted. And, it, and again, it's going to automatically open up in data sheet view because that's our automatic opening, what it's going to open to. If I want to view this in a different view, I can view it in design view or I can view it in SQL or SQL view. Okay, so just wanted to double check and make sure that it, it created it the way I wanted to. My last name sorted and that's what it has done. All my last names sorted by last name. So I can close this and move on to my next item. Let me see. Okay, the next thing we're going to be doing is um, we're going to be adding some fields to a query that's already been created. So the one that we're going to be working in over here is the reside. I think it's the reside um, criteria query. So I'm gonna, it wants me to open this in design view. And again, it's automatically gonna open in data sheet view unless I tell it otherwise. So to open this in design view, I right click my mouse and I can automatically go up to design view. Okay, so it opens up in design view for me. The one that I want to Go to is the consultant ID column in here. Um, so, so it's automatically highlighted for me. So from the Query Tools Design tab up here at the top, in the Query Tools Setup group, in the Query Setup group, I'm going to select Delete Columns because it's asking me first to delete this column. So if you're wanting to delete a column, this is how you do this. Um, sorry, I should have told you. First, we're going to be deleting a column and then we're going to add a column in here. So to delete a column, I make sure that I have something highlighted, the field name highlighted. And so if I wanted to highlight one, um, first you select, oops, make sure that field name is selected. Go up to the Query, um, Query Tools Design tab in the Query make sure it's selected make sure that one is selected go to the query tools design tab in the query setup um, group and then delete the columns so now those columns are gone um, 
So under the reside field in the design grid, Okay, I'm under here in the criteria row. So the criteria row is over here. You're just gonna be following along the directions. Make sure you read carefully where it's telling you to go. So I've got all of these different um, rows over here. I've got field, table, sort, show, criteria, and or. So in the criteria row, I'm gonna go over here and it wants me to USA. So I'm going to type equals USA. Let me go over here and read what it's. Add criteria to select only those records where the reside field value equals USA. So I'm just going to type equals criteria equals USA. So I'm going to be very specific and just put equals USA in that row. So that's all you have to do there. And when I press enter, again, it puts the quotation marks around it. So I don't physically have to type the quotation marks around it. When I press enter, it's automatically going to do that for me. Okay. So, and again, it's going to show up that criteria when we're over in our um, data sheet view. Okay. The spreadsheet is going to kind of talk to us and show us what's in our quotation marks over here in our criteria or it's gonna kind of pull that information for us because that's what it's looking for. Anything that's um, in that criteria that has USA in it is what we're looking for. Um, let's see. Okay, so we're gonna look for save. Go ahead and save this. And it's already, we've already saved the name So we don't have to save the name of the query again because it's already been saved. So just make sure you save it up here. We can either double click this and it's automatically gonna show us this information in our data sheet view. And you can just double check and make sure that the reside criteria all says USA on it and it does, okay? And so now we can close it. You always want to go in or I like to go in and just double check and make sure that whatever you have told your, um, your sheet to do, whatever command you put in, especially in design view, you want to go in and data sheet view and just make sure that that change actually has come across. And if it didn't come across the way you wanted it to, you might want to go back in and just do it again. Okay, so that's a good way to just kind of double check your work. Um, so the next one is just is doing uh, making a change in the or row. I don't think y'all seen an or row again. Um, so let's go in and and just do this. We're going to the paid or balance query. We're gonna open this in design view again. In the paid field column, we're gonna go down to the um, criteria row first. We're gonna type equals zero. Okay, let me read this one to you. I'll tell you how it's worded. Open the paid or field paid or balance query in design view and add a criteria to select only those records where the paid field value equals zero. Okay, so we've done that. Or the balance field equals zero. Okay, so we did the paid field equals zero and now we're looking for this or row over here. So we did the paid field equals zero. And now we want to go to the balance field. And in the or row, we're just gonna simply type equals zero, okay? So paid field equals zero, balance field equals zero, okay? So once we did that, 
we're just going to save what we did. Click the little save icon up here at the top. And then we can again right click paid or balance or double click it to look at it in data sheet view. So we've got paid in zero or balance will be in zero. So you've got your first two, you've got three items that are zero and paid and you've got the other items over here that are zero. Okay, so paid or balance equals zero. So there you go. And then just close this out. Okay, the next item it tells us to do, um, Okay, we're gonna lengthen a table so that you can see all fields. And we're going to we're gonna make a few changes in this next one. So let's just walk through these steps together. Um so we're gonna right click the comparison salary query. Okay. We're going to select design view because we're pretty much working in design view in all of these. We're first going to lengthen this consultant table up here. We're just going to make sure that we can see everything. Again, if you have that scroll bar over here, you want to lengthen this so that you can see all of your field names up here. Um, then we have our first name is not down here. We need to add this to the column down here. So we wanna add our first name down here. Um, and it's the one that's selected because it's all, it's highlighted and it's black with white letters. So that's gonna let you know that this is the field column, field name column that is selected at this time. So we can just click in it Hang on. So you click it to select it and you get that little bitty arrow that points down and you can move it. So it wanted us to move it in front of last name. Oops. Hang on. Let's try this again. Okay, I've selected this and now I'm moving. See where the bold line moves across and now I've moved first name in front of last name. So I have consultant ID, first name, last name, then salary. So it wanted us to move our first name column in front of the last name column. So I did that. And now in the salary column, it wants us to go down to the criteria row. So it's the next to the last row on here. And it wants us to look for anything that's greater than this correctly. Make sure I'm reading my handwriting right. Sorry. <laughs> We're looking for any add criteria to select only those records where the salary field value is greater than 70,000. So we're just going to type a greater than 70,000. And again, you don't add any punctuation in that. So it's only seven, zero, 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 zero. So no punctuation, no commas in that or anything like that. Okay, so we got that added. Okay, in the last name column, it wants us to sort. So we're going up to our sort row. And again, you get that little down arrow toggle key here. We're going to choose from the drop, drop down box and we're going to sort last name in descending order. Okay. And then from the query tools design tab, query tools design tab, because again, anytime you've created something, you get those new tabs up here at the top. So in the query tools design tab, in the results group, 
we are going to run this query. So this is the first time that we've actually run a query. So we're going to run the query. And guess what happens when you run a query? It's probably going to change into, you guessed it, data sheet view. So it does basically the same thing that it does when we do save and then go over here and right click and go to data sheet view. It made the changes that we wanted it to make. It sorted this descending order and last name and it showed us all of the salaries over 70,000, okay? So when we run the query, it made the changes, it saved all of our changes, and then it opened it up in data sheet view. So that's what it does when you run a query, okay? So that's just a little shortcut for you that you can do. So after you've done, you're done with that, um, you can run the query. And then if you have seen any changes that you need made in the data sheet view, you can go and edit records there as well. So you can make changes in data sheet view as well. So that's what we're gonna do next. We're still in number four on this. So with a query still in data sheet view, we're gonna edit this first record up here. So we're gonna change the first name from this Melo D to Melody, M-E-L-O-D-I-E. -E. So we're gonna edit this. Okay, it's a good way that you can just double check and make sure everything's spelled the same and all of that kind of stuff. Let me see if I enter, okay. So now we can just save it, just to make sure that change is saved and then close this out. So you can edit things in both views, okay. Um, next thing we're going to be doing, um, let's go ahead and go through this too. We're going to go on to the Rasad last name. Again, we're going to open start out in design view. Um, we're going to go down to the Rasad, um, the reside column, select that, and I'm just clicking this toggle key and it just makes sure that my column is selected because, um, well, Okay, so to select that, sorry, I had a, had a little moment there. <laughs> to select this, you're just gonna click, um, left click your mouse at the very top and see that when you go to the very top of the column, you'll get that little bitty, let me click out of it so you can see, you'll get this little bitty down arrow when you're at the very top of the column when you left click your mouse, it's going to highlight that entire column in um, a dark black color. So when you get that, you know that you've selected the entire column. Okay. So when you do this, you can just click on it and then you'll get that little line, kind of a bold line to the left of it. That means that you're ready to um, move it. And you'll also get the little dotted box around the arrow. And that also lets you know that you're kind of in move mode where you can move this. Um, so you're gonna go, you're gonna move it to the left of last name. So we wanna move this to the very front of the line over here to the left of last name. So now in our reside field column, we're gonna to go to the sort row. And again, we have that little toggle key, that drop down arrow over here to the right. We're gonna sort this in descending order. 
And in the last name field, we're going to select, we're going to sort this in ascending order. Okay, and it tells us to save this and then double check our work. Okay. So it's sorted. here and here. Um, close this out. The next one is this is the same thing we've already done. Balance and paid, we've already done this. I'll go ahead and show you one more time just in case you've forgotten. Open this in design view. Um, in the paid field column, we're going to go to criteria. We're doing equals zero. And in the balance field column in criteria, we're doing equals zero. So we haven't done one quite like that. So the criteria is both. You have paid and balance. So let me tell you how that one is read in the directions. It's a little different than the last one we had because the last one was or. And this one is open the balance and paid query in design view and add a criteria to select only those records where the paid field value equals zero and the balance field value equals zero. So if you have an and, that means you're gonna do the same you're going to do the criteria in both of those. So it's not an or. If it's an and, you're just going to do um, in the criteria field. Okay. So if it's an and, you just stay in the criteria field. If it was an or, I would do this, whatever the first one is, and then the or in the second. But since it's an and, it's going to be in both, and it'll be whichever one comes first and then whichever one is second. Um, so we're going to save. It says to save, and then it says to open over here in data sheet view. Oops. Wait to open. So balance and paid are both zero. We can close that one out. And Our next one is the date and time query. Doing this in design view. In the start date field, we're going to the criteria row and we're doing is greater than this date, 1, 1, 2019. So anything that's greater than this, when you do, when you type enter, you'll notice the pound signs will come up around the date, okay? So that's what's gonna come up around the date. Um, you're gonna save this, you're gonna open up in data sheet view, sorry, and you'll notice you should have about 15, or you should have exactly 15. and it'll show you down here at the bottom, one of 15. So close this out. The next item is um, the client name query. Doing this in design view. Go into the um, client name field column. And then we're going to the criteria row down here and we're looking for something that is like S. And let me tell you how this is read over here in the directions. Because the clients of global are located in several countries, it may be difficult to know exactly how the client name is spelled 
So we're going to open the client name query in design view, which we have done. And we're going to add criteria to select only those records where the client name field begins with the letter S. So we're going to save the changes to the query and open it in data sheet view to confirm that there are only three records. So again, the way we're going to do this is um, we type the word like S. And we put a asterisk out to the right of the S, to the right side of the S. So our S is, should automatically, when we type enter, the S should automatically become in um, quotation marks. And they did go over this in the book a little bit. So I just wanted to go back over it with you. So if you want looking for something that starts with S or has S in it, um, you'll do like the word like, then S with an asterisk. I'm gonna say that, we're gonna open it in data sheet view and we do in fact have three records. So one of three is showing. So we can close that. And um, the next one, okay. It's very important to make sure that all queries are closed before you create a new one, okay? So from the Create tab, in the Queries group, we're gonna create one in Design view. So we're gonna go to Query Design and then again, we have our show table, which gives us the options of what we can use from our tables. And this is a list of tables that we have available in this workbook, okay? And we also have a list of all the queries that are available in here too. So we can select from any of those. And um, what we're gonna be using, make sure that your table tab is selected. We're gonna be using our consultant um, table, and we're also going to use our country table, okay? So after we collect, after we do both of those, you can close. And what I did on that, um, you can either highlight it and select add, or you can just double click and they'll come up here. So either way is fine. We're gonna close those. And again, if you have a scroll bar, what do we do? Wanna make sure that you um, expand that out so you can see all of your field names, okay? Um, so from the consultant table, what you want to show down here, and it is important to get these in the specific order that they ask you to in the directions, or you'll have to move them around when you get down there, but you wanna to try to get it in order the first time. They want you to do first name, last name. Those are the only two from the consultant. And then from the country table, they want you to do country name. So first name, last name, country name. And then um, now we're gonna do country code. Entry code, we're gonna to drag to reside. So I'm doing a relationship here between a primary key and a non-primary key. Um, and reside Yeah, country code to reside. Okay, there we go. We're gonna save this. And I assume reside is a foreign key. I'm not sure I didn't 
look at that, but you always have to go from a primary key to a something that's not a primary key. So I could make a relationship from consultant ID to something else, but you're always going from the primary key to the other one. If you went the opposite way, reside to up here, you would get an error when you go to turn this in. It's not going to make the correct relationship, okay? So we're going to save this. And again, when you go to save it, we have not named this because this is a brand new query. We have to name it now. And they want us to name this country consultant. They don't want us to use camel casing. They want us to use a hyphen. Now you can use characters as you're doing this. Um, you just cannot have a space in there. Okay, so you always want to have either um, um, an underscore, a hyphen, a special character, something like that, or use camel casing as you're naming tables because a space is considered another character. Okay, that's why they want to make sure you use um, an actual character as you're naming things because the computer or the program is going to read a space as a character. Okay, that's why we don't want to have spaces in there. Okay. Um, so, okay. And so now we're going to go, we're going to view this as in our data sheet view. So you can also go to view this in data sheet view from here. So we have our three views here. We can view it automatically in data sheet view from there. Or you could have double clicked on it to view it in data sheet view, um, whatever, and just make sure that you've got your, your items listed here. So we've got our first name, our last name, and our country name. And then close that out. Okay, so we're going to right click on project months open this up in design view. In the months field column, we're gonna go to the criteria row and this equals two. Click enter, save, and then double click that and we should have two records and we do. So close that. Done with that one. That was a quick one. Um, we're right clicking on establish maximum months. Open this up in design view. So what we're going to do now is create a new field. This is something we haven't done yet. So from um, Okay, so in our field name down here, we're just going to click on field name right here to, um, to the right of months. And we're just going to um, We're just going to change it to max months. Making sure I'm doing this right. Okay, so we have max months, and you notice it automatically. No, it didn't automatically do that max months, and then we have months plus three is what we wanna put in.
them real quick. I'm having trouble reading my notes here. Sorry about that. Number 11, it says to open that up in design view, modify the query name, modify the query by creating a calculated field. Okay, so we're creating a calculated field. I apologize. So it's max months and then months plus three. So we did exactly what it told us to do. So we named it max months colon space in um, square brackets months, close your square brackets space plus, and I'll go ahead and do a space there, space three. So do it exactly like it told you, told you to do. Um, so we did that in the first empty field over here. Okay, so we do that, press enter. So max months, months plus three. It told us to go ahead and save this. Save it. We're going to view it in data sheet view. So we've got max months, months plus three. So every one of these months should add three to it. And it looks like that has been done. So all of these are adding three. Three plus three. Three plus three is six. Six plus three is nine. Nine plus three is 12. So it has done that. So we're going to close this out. Okay, so that's all you had to do on that one. Um, number 12, we're opening up the consultant table and I think we're just opening this up in data sheet view to start out. Just double check, make sure, because we've been doing design view this whole time. Open the consult table in data sheet view. Use the find and replace feature to find the consultant whose first name is Georgiana and replace the name using Gina as the new value and close it. So we're using find and replace in this one. So we're using the consultant table. Double click to open in data sheet view. So the first thing we're gonna do up here is we're gonna click, see this little um, grid up here at the top, this little table. We're gonna click, whoops, that's not it. We're gonna click right up here in the first little box and this turns the entire table blue, okay? This lets me know I have selected the entire table of consultant. And so now I can go, um, to the home tab in the find group over here, okay? And I'm gonna select find, okay? And I'm gonna find, I'm gonna actually select replace because that way I can choose find and replace. So I'm gonna find George Anna Sorry, I like to always double check my spelling. <laughs> spelling is not my thing. G. Okay, George Anna, and we're going to replace it with Gina. G I N A. Okay. So we selected our entire table first. You wanna make sure you do that first. We went from the home tab to the find group. We selected find, and then in this find and replace, we chose replace. That gave us the find and the replace option. So we're gonna find Georgina, replace with Gina, okay? And then we're gonna say replace all. Um, it 
It says you will not, you won't be able to undo this replace operation. Do you want to continue? Yes. Okay, so I said replace all again, and it says access finished searching these records. The search item was not found. So I guess there wasn't one found in this. Um, hopefully I spelled that correctly. <laughs> I think I did. Um, Okay, yeah, that is what I was supposed to do on that. So anyway, that is how you do that. Close this and then I'm gonna save that and close the table, okay? So I'm gonna now double click the country table and open it in data sheet view. I'm gonna again click on this top left section, it's right next to country code, to select the entire table. So from the home tab in the formatting group, which is right here, I'm going to change the font of the entire item in here to Arial. Okay, and then I'm going to change the font size to 10 and then um, I'm going to choose the country name column again you you hold you find that little arrow at the top when you see the little arrow down like this you can select the entire column make sure the entire column is selected from the home tab in the sort and filter group, I'm going to choose select ascending. I'm going to choose ascending order. Okay, so it's just going to sort this in ascending order. Okay, and then I'm going to save this and I'm going to close just this little table. Okay. Okay, next I'm gonna do the client table in design view. Again, right click on that, open it up in design view. And I'm gonna choose the calculation field. Okay, I'm in the calculation field. Okay, so I did this little arrow to select the field. It gives me, it, it gives me this field selected and it gives me the field property properties down here. So make sure that one is selected. So now I have these field properties down here at the bottom of the sheet. Under the expression row, it says paid plus balance. So I'm going to change the plus to paid minus balance. And actually, I'm just going to change it right here. Paid minus balance. I'm going to save this and close it. So really, all you're doing in this is so easy to use access. You're just following directions, okay? Because you've got all of these different options that you can use, and you're just following the directions as you go. Let's just save it and then close it. And the skill table. So again, you're on the table. You're opening it in data sheet view. Again, it automatically defaults to open in data sheet view. We're doing the skill code, uh, sorry, skill name column. Again, I get that little arrow. I'm going to select the whole column. Home tab my sort and filter group, I'm going to select descending. Okay, save and close. I'm going to click the consultant table to open up in data sheet view. I'm going to select 
the reside column, which is right here. And I'm also going to select the salary column. And to do that, I'm just going to simply hold down my shift key and then click that little arrow at the top. So I just held down my shift key and I used my mouse to select salary. So reside and salary to select both of them. And then I'm going to just right click in any one of these fields. We'll select both of them. And I'm going to hide both of the fields. So I hid both of those fields. I'm going to save this and close. And that is all we are doing today. So I always go up, make sure everything first, make sure everything is closed out. Go to file, always compact and repair before you do anything else. Then file and save as and choose the little disk here at the bottom and I can save it wherever I want to in my files over here. I always go to, um, I, have a, I have a flash drive in so I can choose to save it in my flash drive. But if you're saving it um, somewhere else, um, you can choose whatever location you're saving this on. So anyway, um, hope that was helpful for you. Hope you have a great day and I'll see you guys next time.